I will read to you now Johnny Driveby's open letter to theists. I want all theists of all religions and denominations to read this and understand that when it comes to convincing me that a god exists, you have all lost the argument. You're done. Your gods will have to get off their omnifictional high horse and prove they exist without you. Not a single one of you have ever presented anything that I can use as evidence. Just give up already. Understand that the more you try to convince me, the more I am unable to believe your non-evident gods are real. It's gotten to the point now where I scratch my head and wonder if there is any sanity left in some of you. If you are sane, I'm sorry, but your actions allow me to suspect nefarious intentions. Take a good hard look at your megachurches. If you can't see the moral bankruptcy that's being perpetuated in what one of your religious sects calls the money changers and lenders, well... Y you just might be the problem. These churches have nothing to base moral authority on. If you think I should just sit there and let them do their thing... They shift the blame by filtering it through their proposed invisible god or gods to condemn me to hell using this to recruit the tithers for their so-called god-given estates. I'm sorry if this is the case. The argument is over. I can't see any good reason for further discussion. I would speak for all atheists, but I cannot. Many of you seem to think that we do not have the default position. Why? See rhetorical. That position you cannot change. We are all different except for one thing. We do accept the evidence you have given us as proof of a god's existence. The problem is that there is none. Zero. El Zippo. Some theists try to paint us all with this broad brush and say things like, Knowledge of gods are written in your hearts. This is what they claim by reading a passage out of a very debatable ancient book that was obviously written by people that were very ignorant of how the natural world worked. People seem to be complicit with these tales told. I often pause to so wonder what that, that is. I suppose it provokes a curiosity into the strange foibles of the human mind. Evolution has given us various tendencies which in general helped our tenuous survival but also at times make us vulnerable to nonsense. For example, the confusion of correlation with causation in the post hoc ergo propter hoc used to prompt our ancestors to run away in fear from what they were actually harmless things in their environment. But it helped to keep them on their toes, and sometimes it removed them from very real dangers so that they could reproduce for another day. Running away from what one doesn't understand does little harm, assuming it doesn't take up all our waking hours. And sometimes it did our ancestors a bit of good. An example is, the very first time they saw a wolverine, their first reaction to something large and new was to run from the wolverine. So when a tribal-minded creationist spees rants against the dangers of the evolutionary thinking and a lot of science they don't really understand. He's repeating the kinds of warnings that our ancestor Thog must have delivered around the cave campfire each night. After all, one had better best instill plenty of fear into the young ones so that nobody lets their natural curiosity lead them to observe the new phenomenon for a little too long and pokes it with a stick to see what happens i.e. the proto-scientific method of our ancestors. I do repeat, their most advanced scientific method was poking shit with a stick for crying out loud. There are those of you who want to believe, then there are some of you that sort of believe. But you both are complicit with these willfully ignorant people because either you fell for their fast talk or it makes you feel better about the mysteries of death. The big unknown. Hey, that's too bad. I'm sorry, but it's death. You're dead. There is no evidence that our conscience can exist beyond death. Go ahead and research the science. At least it's on the internet now, and it makes it much easier to debunk. It is our best knowable answer that there is no evidence to support consciousness after you pass on. This is not a good reason to believe. I see so many of you 
clinging on to this ancient book which grants you a ticket to an eternal paradise, no matter how much of a scumbag you may be. Just believe you're in. On the other hand, I could die saving the entire world from a horrible fate, yet I would still be condemned to spend an eternity in hell, simply because I couldn't make myself believe. I want you to think very hard about this. And even after all of that, still no evidence. Thought I'd forget, eh? <laughs> you just want it to be true. Maybe you think it's okay to allow yourself to pretend that what you are presenting to us is falsifiable empirical evidence for your god's existence. As soon as you realize how unsound your reasoning is, you either try to pretend you can read our minds, saying we all are simply rejecting your god. No, my friends, it does not work that way. The theists that try to use these tactics are either very ignorant or delusional, they think they know an atheist's thoughts, or they are very dishonest, try to make others think they are telling the truth about knowing an atheist's thoughts. Before any of you go around accepting a theist's authority on these fallacious claims about atheists, I suggest asking him some hard questions to see if his logic is corrupt. Then maybe asking an atheist or two like me before you claim knowledge on what I or any atheist actually thinks. It is intellectually dishonest and allows some to wrongfully judge people. Westboro should be a fair warning. There is nothing wrong with questioning a being that will torture you for an eternity for simply not believing he exists. Don't you think that you deserve to be given a better answer than you can't possibly begin to understand my plan? That opens you up to believing someone's claims who deserve nothing more than the title of snake oil salesman. Part of that problem is that even some of the salesmen selling the snake oil are being fooled right alongside their customers not challenging their own biases. Learning good critical thinking skills is part of the key to making better life and world decisions. We have a great system that makes us test our hypotheses, retest it, rinse, and repeat until we have a confidence in the validity of the claim and improve our knowledge with everything we falsify. It will keep you from falling for the claims that may not be true. It's the scientific method. It works, damn it! Remember this. There has never been any real evidence for gods to exist. Therefore, all any theist has got is presuppositional arguments. This does not equal evidence. Without evidence of the supernatural, science is no longer able to falsify this claim. Therefore, there is no proof of a supernatural or intelligent being. How can people claim to be rational and then be so gullible by taking a theist's word when he makes a presuppositional claim about knowledge of God's plan being written on everyone's heart? Does he call that proof? Impossible! Bollocks! And simply vouch for myself and say demonstrably that this is not the case for me. I have never felt the knowledge of God's written on my heart. It sounds more like emotional feelings mixed with adrenaline-confused states, which are dismissed as natural. You can't say that it was divine. Show me this heart that was under a god's pen. It truly is time to stop wishing magical things are real. How can we grow if we can't let go of these childhood fantasies? I'm sorry your gods want to hide from us. None of us can force them to reveal themselves. That is all the evidence so far that has been presented by any of you. None. I have to try to show another example, as it seems so hard for you theists to comprehend. It's called formal logic. It's part of philosophy. Science doesn't give a shit. We don't give a shit. You claim there is a mountain. When you show me the mountain, I have a reason to believe there is a mountain, because I can see it. Recite a formal argument, point to an empty field, and I laugh at you. This is how it's been the whole time. You fail to grasp. The formal arguments are all you have. Nobody sees your gods. Your gods don't speak for themselves. And if I used your line of arguments to prove a mountain exists, people would laugh at me. 
Do you get it now how useless formal arguments are? Why is it so hard for you to understand how it is for me? In my journey through life, I decided at a very young age that I didn't enjoy being fooled. I needed knowledge of things, not just relying on faith that they were real. Faith is not what knowing something means. I would question anyone, even more so if they were clergy. I wasn't raised to look at them as authority figures. Well, I didn't, because they are just people. Not some unquestionable bringer of law and divine authority. I was shielded from religious teaching. As I grew older, I started to dismiss people that believed as they actually made it really easy to wonder why it was okay for them to claim that their gods were all powerful and great for helping them wake up on time, but then turning around and blaming the devil or someone on them being late. Hey, hey what about you, pal? Don't you feel like you might have a bit of an impact on this known universe? That's even with a god. Sheesh! I had a good grasp on what imaginary and imagining was at a very young age. I guess maybe I thought everybody just knew the difference. That was my ignorance. So I grew up just ignoring the really religious. Oh, and for those of you sitting on the fence, you have got to stop being complicit with whom you are wrongfully let slip by with false, unfounded claims. Don't be afraid to question these people that you give your trust and authority to. If something doesn't seem logical, question it. Make sure that their claim is a sound, logical argument. Don't just accept their answer as fact. It's just too easy for the exaggerated stories to get going. It's like a giant snowball rolling down a hill, splattering snowflakes of ignorance on people all over the place that can't defend against it. That is how we got here in the first place. If you do the research, you will find out that they really don't have any better of an understanding of piety than you do. It is because they didn't question their authority figures, extraordinary claims, as those who taught them that this was true. And so on, and so on, and so on. I'll bet the theory of evolution that it goes all the way back to the roots when a story was first told by a campfire to keep the children in line to be good, upstanding members of their tribe. Uncle Anita Bush, it helped us survive at one point in our journey through evolution. We don't need those traits any longer. In fact, it is slowing down our progression. We have to give up omnifictional beliefs. We have a method that has become what we are now. We have to start accepting the science. You please also tell me why an all-powerful being would need such an incompetent middleman messenger, ignorant of the natural world? Well, I mean, seriously, the Bible and all religious doctrine have been debunked thoroughly. It's full metaphoric nonsense designed to tug at emotion. Not to mention things not even remotely possible, except for in a sci-fi movie. Well, at least no one has provided evidence of it yet. <laughs> yes, the Bible is nothing but the creations and the dreams from the foibles of our mind. I can maybe see why you want to project this onto other people willing to accept it, but I think maybe you should work this argument out before doing this, if you have any reason whatsoever left in your head. Why did this all-powerful being use such a poor method to communicate such an important message? Why would he delegate writing in his book to imperfect and ignorant superstitious men? Have them write it in such a way that no one can agree on its meanings and definitions? Why not also write it in a parchment that almost didn't even get discovered? He defies every last bit of omniscient. I just hope he doesn't have shoes that need tying. Just saying. Right. That book does not line up with my morals or any other civilized human being. Try to do some research on that as well. You ignore the bad, and when you don't, you try to blame it on the evil that God created, mind you, or conflate it with love, if that's even possible, for humanity's sake. Then praise your God for the good. You know what? He hasn't even created a messenger capable of explaining his existence clearly for at least 2,000 plus years. Isn't this just the irony of it, though? Think about it. This god certainly knows me, and he would definitely know what it would take for me to believe. So either he doesn't exist, or he doesn't care. Yeah.